everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had a great day. Hope you're having a great start uh, to your week. I am coming to you on the move. Uh, I hope that you had a chance to check out uh, this morning's live stream, uh, which was the fourth installment of the Black Wealth series, where we are talking about different component, components, elements, and chapters in my 25th book, which I'm writing right now. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, go to it now on the YouTube, the Black Voice YouTube channel. If you're watching somewhere else, go to the Black Voice YouTube channel and check it out. Those of you on the channel, uh, check it out after you finish watching this one. Um, I think we touched on some big points. This, uh, the Today's installment was on uh, redlining and gentrification and we are moving through this process talking about all of the institutional uh, mechanisms and policies in place that have worked against us over the last 156 years uh, as far as wealth building is concerned also as a part of this book project and the overall uh, black wealth project <clears throat> I've invited all of my subscribers, all of my tribe, my community to be a part of the sponsorship program where you're invited to sponsor a memorial for somebody that you want to pay tribute to who has made a difference in your life in whatever area. Uh, that could be uh, someone who is no longer with us, uh, an ancestor, it could be an elder, like a parent, a grandparent, it could be a spouse, uh, it could be a mentor, a teacher, uh, whatsoever. But you can literally sponsor uh, a space in the book to pay tribute to somebody that you know has made a difference in your life and the sponsorships have no minimum you can sponsor with as little as 50 cents uh, i'm saying that just because i don't know how much it ch costs you to, to charge a certain amount but it can be less than 50 cents i guess because i'm i'm not going to put a minimum on it i, I want everybody to have a chance to participate no matter what your income or situation i want you to be able to recognize and uh eternally uh engrave it in a place that it can always be and so that's going to be a part of what we're doing with this particular book and you can click the link in the description box to learn more about how to sponsor but Anybody who sponsors, regardless to the amount you sponsor, will have your name in the book and you will be able to pay tribute to the person in writing with uh, however many sentences. I didn't even put a minimum on the sentences. You know, be respectful for the space because, uh, you know, you're taking a space it does uh, cost, but pay tribute. I mean, really show some love to the people who have made a difference in your life. Um, now, for those who do uh, sponsor $25 or more, you get a, a signed book uh, along with what you uh, get to pay tribute to. Uh, anybody who sponsors more than 100, 100 or more, will get a dedicated page, meaning that you will have your own page to pay your tribute. Uh, anybody who uh, sponsors $500 will have a dedicated page plus be able to actually submit a picture of the person they're paying tribute to. And that's the sponsorship program. I invite you to be a part of it. Uh, all of it will be published uh, as a part of the uh, book publication when I finish writing it. We are writing it, well, I'm writing it right now. Um, and I plan to be finished and have the book actually published before the end of the year. So this is time that, you know, anybody wants to sponsor someone, this is the time to make it happen. Uh, now, on to something that I think on one side is extremely trivial, on another side, it, 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 it's a major magnifying glass of what's wrong right now in the black community. The milk crate challenge. I mean, when I first heard about it, actually, I was like I said, I've been away uh, for a few days with my wife. Uh, 
celebrating her 50th birthday, enjoying her, you know, just really loving on my wife, uh, which is extremely important to me, um, above all else I do. And so I just happened to hear about the milk crate challenge. I'm like, what the hell? And so I hear that, okay, this is what people are doing. Still hadn't seen it. I've only seen one attempt and it didn't end well. Uh, but regardless how it ends, my thing is we are far too easily distracted. We are far too easily entertained. I, I made a point in a post today that you don't want to be taught. You want to be entertained. You don't want to be empowered. You want to be entertained. You don't want to be centered, focused, and held accountable. You want to be entertained. You want to find something that makes you... I get, I get it. It's an escape. Escapism has been uh, the point of focus for blacks for far too long. Yeah, we deal with a bunch of crap. A lot of us come from crazy places. That's one of the reasons I love on my wife. My wife comes from one of the most darkest places a person should ever have to run from childhood sexual abuse, childhood domestic abuse, childhood horror. So I understand sometimes there's a need for an escape because everything you're in is just horrible. But what I can tell you is, as long as you're escaping, you're not healing. As long as you're escaping, you're not growing. As long as you're escaping, you're not facing down and becoming bigger than the problem. That's something that you gotta understand. As long as they can keep us getting away from the real issues, as long as they can keep us from dealing with the miseducation of our babies, as long as they can keep us from dealing with mass incarceration, as long as they can keep us from dealing with uh, 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 perpetual generational poverty and the lack of any true uh, connectivity and unity within the black community, as long as they can get us to stop focusing on the fact that we're in last place in every socioeconomic category being measured, as long as they can get us to laughing and doing things that we can share, and, and, and we're sharing it because of the likes we're getting. We're sharing because it makes us laugh. My thing is I have absolutely nothing against laughter. I think comedy has to be a part of our healing process. There's power in laughter, not just in escapism, but laughter itself generates hormones that are part of the healing process. I have nothing whatsoever to do with that. But when you are sitting up and you're looking at people that are doing things that are actually detrimental to their physical health, in a time when we should be focusing on what's in front of us, they're forcing some things down our throats. They are giving us fewer and fewer uh, rights that should be automatically ours. They are literally starting to dictate our own health protocols. They are sitting up and doing a bunch of things that should be confronted, a bunch of things that should be dealt with. We should be sitting, to sitting down together and collectively coming up with strategies, building, preparing ourselves for what's coming, and yet here we are climbing milk crates. And again, this isn't, I'm not a killjoy. I'm not. If you talk to my wife, my wife says it all the time. If they actually knew how throwed off and silly you are and how much you play and, you know, what you do with the kids, they would probably be shocked. And I said, yeah, if people don't know me, they would be because when I'm out there doing what I'm doing, I'm out there to get it done. And I'm centered and I'm focused. And it seems like I'm the most serious person in the world. I'm serious when I need to be, but I know how to love on my family. I know how to make my family laugh. I know how to bring joy to my family. I know how to bring joy to my friends. I am not in my friend's space to sit up and be serious and heavy all the time. But my friends know there's a time for it all. And my friends are the type of people that's about progress. So then when it's time to buckle down, we buckle down. My family understands when it's time to buckle down, we buckle down. My wife understands when it's time to buckle down, we buckle down. So, yes, I am all for laughing. I'm yes for taking a break. I mean, watch a comedy show, watch a funny movie, uh, sit down and laugh and talk about the good old times that were funny, you know, and omitting some of the some of the horrors, 
You know, we all got horror stories. You don't have to talk about them all the time. You don't have to, if you've gotten through it and you've moved past it and you've grown for it, you, the only time you need to talk about it is when you're encouraging someone else that might be going through the same thing. What you can do is recall those moments that brought you joy. Recall those moments where you won. Recall those moments where you were victorious and, and, and use that as encouragement for the next steps that you have to take and the, and the heights that you have to climb. But you've got to be focused. We are, we are far too engulfed in things that bring no value. Uh, climbing a crate has no intrinsic value to the advancement of absolutely anybody except the people who might be getting paid for the likes they're getting for pe watching people fall off these crates. Now from what I understand there have been a few people hospitalized. Climbing milk crates. Come on people. Come on. Like I said I'm not a killjoy but come on. You know, maybe if everything was great and we were in first place and we were the part of the power structure and you had some people that had brain farts and all they wanted to do was do stupid stuff, I'd probably say, well, go for it. You know, stupid is and stupid does, right? But we don't have that luxury. We don't have the luxury of just doing stupid stuff because you can find comedy and laughter without the stupidity, without the built-in distraction, without the, 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 the loss of focus and direction. And it happens to us too often. This isn't the first challenge. They've been doing the challenge uh, uh, bait and switch for some years now. Throw up a challenge, watch y'all get into it. That go two months gone of, of whatever challenge it is and nothing addressed. And, and it's great because it's an escape. Man, I ain't gotta deal with uh, the horrible lending practices that my people face. I don't have to deal with uh, the the, feminized, the the agenda to feminize young black males. I don't have to deal with miseducation. I don't have to deal with uh, the lack of a, a, a level playing field in the job market. I don't have to deal with any things. I don't have to worry about the responsibility of owning my own. I don't have to worry about the responsibility of building with others like myself. I don't have to worry about the responsibility of being a, a man and a protector or a woman and a nurturer and a, and a healer. I don't have to worry about what, what, what my responsibilities are. I'm having fun falling off of crates. Becoming entertainment. You don't want to be taught and empowered. You want to be entertained. You want your 15 minutes of fame, even if it kills you. We better wake up. We had better wake up. On that note, look, I'm going to get off of here. It ain't a whole lot to say about that, man. But I had to touch on it because I'm looking at it and it's crazy. I saw a place... And, 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 and I'm tripping. I actually saw a picture where in a place, they're literally selling milk crates for 99 cents. They're so they're going to capitalize off the ignorance. Everybody's going to capitalize off our ignorance. That almost slipped my mind. 99 cents per crate for milk crates. So you can go fall and bust your head open to the white meat. Instead of sitting up and filling your head with something that can take you to the next level, that can make you an integral part, an instrument for our people. But oh, no, let's go climb milk crates. Look, on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Like I said at the beginning of the video, go check out uh, today's installment on the Black Wealth Series, uh, where we talk about redlining and gentrification. If you have not yet become a sponsor uh, on book number 22, where you can play tribute to someone who has been, had an impact in your life, click that link and become a sponsor. Get your name and your message to the person you want to play tribute to in that book, uh, publishing that book permanently. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.